So I'm Debbie Spore. I'm very happy to uh, introduce our speakers today. Today we uh, we. I'm serving as speaker, uh, facilitator, and tech person. So <laughs> I wear two hats. Um, this presentation or this uh, panel is about project-based learning. So we just saw some particular types of projects. This is kind of project-based learning generally, and I would say project-based learning asks. We imagine traditional academic structures, place students in positions of authority. We heard a little bit about ownership in the last, um, the last panel. Often use a blended learning. Uh, this session looks at three ways that three different colleges have uh, done this and the lessons that they've learned from experience. Our first speakers are from Hampshire College, James Miller, Professor of Communications, and Asha Kinney, Assistant Director of Information Technology for Teaching and Learning. Um, and they'll be discussing a seminar course called Media and Cars and how the students use various digital tools to accomplish projects. Um, then we have Red Mendoza up, net, up afterwards, uh, who's the Deputy Director of E-Learning and IT at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, who will introduce his school's team-based learning pedagogy and the process challenges and solutions for implementing <coughs> this approach and the teaching of liberal arts. And finally, we have Paula Rajno, uh, Associate Professor of Mathematics at Shenandoah University, who will talk about uh, blended learning infused into a liberal arts mathematics course for non-mathematicians that are focused on real-world applications uh, of mathematics and mathematical reasoning. Okay. Okay. Good, thank you. Um, do you guys want to take questions in between in advance or at the end? Probably not in advance. That would <laughs> uh, at the end, please submit your questions now. <laughs> <laughs> what is life? <laughs> Why don't we? Because there'll be some text switching. So if there's any burning questions, we can take one or two, and then we'll do most of the questions at the end. Okay. Good. Thank you for coming. The uh, the previous session was so exciting. I couldn't stop popping off to the side. So I'm not to shift my my brain back, and I just discovered I'm the first to speak. So I stumbled. That's why um, the session was exciting for the. The nature of the work that was presented, some of which was done by our neighboring colleagues, but also because I think that uh, uh, issues that emerged in our past semester's work were uh, un unexpectedly, for me, common to these other very different uh, projects. So perhaps we can return to that as a, as a theme. So um, Asha and I did design and teach this course uh, only this past semester, so it's, uh, we're still digesting the, the, uh, the results. Um, we, uh, as one of the uh, projects in the previous session, uh, did also, we benefited from a, a five college blended learning grant, uh, which allowed us to have both funding and expertise of a variety of kinds, and we're quite grateful for that. Uh, every spring term, I, uh, I've been trying in recent years to teach an advanced seminar, usually with a fairly small group of students who are themselves advanced on a subject that relates pretty directly to my own research. And it's been fun for me. And um, this course, from my perspective, uh, began as an attempt to bring blended learning techniques into that sort of uh, experience. Uh, I'm a media sociologist. I've been doing a lot of work on emerging new media in recent years, um, some of it theoretical. And I've been looking around for uh, an empirical case, particularly a, an historical case, that could help me to make the argument that I and others have been making pretty much theoretically otherwise, that emerging new media are going to become more and more embedded parts of built environments, and that uh, spaces will become intelligent, and there'll be all sorts of um, interaction going on just by virtue of our wearing certain kinds of clothing and so forth. And uh, for a variety of reasons, I, I stumbled on uh, the automobile as an example of this kind of thing, because it turns out that if you go back to the 20s, which is when in the US automobiles began to be uh, manufactured or purchased in great numbers, <clears throat> people began bolting big boxy AM radios into cars. And by the end of the 30s, uh, particularly the, the better quality cars, um, had them designed into, integrated uh, into the dashboard uh, in ways that I think are not necessarily predictable, uh, given the nature of a vehicle and uh, AM radio at the time. And then if you look at the post-war period, of course, you can see an explosion of ever more 
the mass media becoming central to the experience of automobility. So anyway, this was a, class, a chance for me to learn, uh, especially from Asha, who is an instructional technologist, um, uh, about one and learning techniques and to advance the kind of uh, research realm that I've been inquiring into. Goals. Um, uh, we, we had too many, <laughs> as the previous group was describing. Um, we principally wanted the students to collaborate and to build uh, what we were thinking of as an archival website, uh, where they would uh, display in a variety of ways research, that's another goal, that they would go out and pursue on their own in a, in a variety of different media from different sources. Um, we would also have uh, uh, normal sorts of things happening, like assign uh, expert uh, primary research readings and discuss them in our face-to-face in our -face sessions. Uh, we wanted students to collaborate uh, online, outside of classrooms. And in some cases, we chose not to meet as a class in order to facilitate that. And of course, we wanted the students and, and me <laughs> to become more comfortable and skilled with using instructional technology. Now, I'd like to say one last thing about the Hampshire College context, and then Asha will walk you through the details of our experience, and then we'll come together at the end and try to talk about lessons <coughs> Hampshire College is a strange place. Um, we are part of the five college system. In fact, we were founded by the other four colleges. The doors opened in 1970. Um, we try to do everything differently, so we have no majors. They are student design concentrations. Every student is required to do what you might call an honors thesis, um, which occupies most of the last year. Um, there are almost no prerequisites, so all kinds of students can take all kinds of classes. Um, because we're a member of the five college system, our students can take classes elsewhere and other uh, students from outside Hampshire can take our classes. Um, and finally, I guess I would add that there has been, uh, before us anyway, very little blended or online uh, learning applications at the college. So we were pioneering uh, things that uh, I'm learning uh, you are too, and in fact lots of people are, and they don't really know what they're doing, and there's very little assessments, and so on and on which is what makes it so thrilling. And we are doing it in a rather peculiar context, uh, which, for example, suggests that we, oh, well, I forgot to mention the, the key ingredient. We don't give grades. Mm. We write narrative evaluations, uh, which is fine with me. I've now been doing that for most of my adult life. But it's possible that there are certain uh, incentives built into assigning uh, grades when it comes to uh, encouraging meeting deadlines and completing tasks. <laughs> uh, maybe that's something I uh, so uh, I'll stop there, and Ashley will take you through the uh, particularities of our experience and we'll talk more about it. Love that question. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to kind of walk through what we did uh, and then what worked and what didn't, show you some of the tools we used in this blended class. Um, so as James said, we got a five college blended learning grant for this course, which meant we started thinking and talking about it a year, basically a year before we taught it. So this was a website we had set up to attract students to the course. Um, so we sort of started blended right from the get-go. We had this website that talked about the course, some advanced readings, who was on the team. Um, and I thought that worked well. So students showed up uh, to the course with a pretty good idea of what it was going to be about. Uh, another thing we did that I thought worked really well was we did a pre-course survey. So we had students fill out this questionnaire in Moodle before about what their goals for the class were, what their experience was nuts and bolts, access to technology, um, what particular pieces of technology they were interested in using. Um, and this was awesome because we were able to come to the course really feeling like we kind of knew the students already and it, we had to skip that whole um, step of icebreaker. So this I would recommend to anyone. Really useful, very easy to do in Moodle. One of the first in-class activities we did was this mind mapping exercise using MindMeister. I don't know if anyone used this website, um, where we did this live in class. If students had laptops, they could jump on and basically map the themes of media and cars, which is this very broad, you know, scope, um, and start to identify what areas people were going to be interested in focusing on. So this was super useful. So this we actually did as an in-class exercise, but then. It, um, we also used it in the online environment as well. 
we did a rapid prototyping exercise, which was suggested to us by um, the five college blended learning folks. We called it Project Zero. Um, we were sort of going by the fail early, fail fast um, ethos. And so between the first class meeting and the second class meeting, the students had to complete a little project. It was just, you know, basic research a subject, give us a little presentation on what you found, work in a group to do this. And they were supposed to work online to make this happen. And we didn't really give them any further instructions, which in retrospect was kind of mean, but we wanted to see what they were going to try to do. And the students found each other on Facebook and used the online environment solely to figure out a way to meet in person. Um, and so that gave us a foreshadowing of the difficulties we were going to encourage. But it was great because it sort of it shows you where the weaknesses are going to be right off of it. So that was very useful. We gave them an introduction to Agile project management because our goal for this course was really to run it as a group project um, with everyone working toward the same goal of this sort of, so, you know, we started with this vague idea of an archive website of some kind. So we gave them an intro to Agile, um, talked about breaking work into sprints, which is kind of how we operated, the roles within an Agile uh, project management workflow. Some of them were familiar with this already, some it was new. Um, a lot of the students in this class are either going into technology fields, some are interested in architecture. So this is going to be useful to them, whether or not they totally got it in the class. I think this is going to come back um, to them later on. But the project itself, we left really open-ended. So again, we had kind of a vague concept of the archive website, but we were really hoping that the students would step up to define that how they wanted. This is very much a Hampshire college kind of thing where students design their own majors, design their own projects. Uh, we were counting on the students to really come forward and design the project of this class, um, which you'll hear more about how that worked later. Uh, we use Trello. Does anyone use Trello in classes a little bit? Yeah, so we use Trello to manage the project of the class. This is a snapshot of our Trello board uh, from kind of the middle of the semester. The way Trello works is you get a board for the project, and then the lists up and down are kind of categories of things to do, and each card, each kind of little thing on the board is an item, to do item. So in the beginning of the semester, we had the class divided into teams. There was a history team doing research. There was a present team exploring you know, modern day media and cars. And then we had a 3D modeling team who were getting themselves up to speed on the modeling software um, and thinking about what kind of projects they were going to work on. So we um, had the different cards, people assigned to different cards. So we really used Trello as a way to map out what we were going to do in that one week or two week chunk of time who was supposed to be doing what. We also used it for class-wide assignments and announcements. We also had um, that miscellaneous items of interest, which was just you know things people found in the news or random bits and pieces. And so with, within, within each of these cards, you can have a little discussion happening too. So there are some, some common thing going back in. So that's Trello. And then this is a snapshot of all the different tools we used for different things. Looking back. Um, we used a ton. I was like, oh my gosh, we used so many different things. But you know, some of them we phased in over the course of the semester. Some of them we maybe you used during just one or two classes. Um, the technology was kind of the easiest piece of this whole project. There was really zero learning curve um, on the students. You know, although it was a small class, very tech savvy students with an embedded, embedded instructional technologist, so it sort of makes sense that it wasn't too difficult. Even the 3D modeling piece, which as we were uh, writing the proposal for this grant, people were kind of the most skeptical of how difficult that was going to be. That ended up being a non-issue because we had four students show up who already had these skills and were just looking to put them to use. And there's one student who wanted to learn 3D modeling, but all she needed was a lynda.com subscription, and then she was good to go. So the tech is easier than we expected. And this is a snapshot of how the students rated the different tools. We did this as an end of semester exercise just to see what they liked, what they didn't. I was happy to see Google Drive be the top one because the answer is finally going to Google Apps in a couple months. I'm able to say, yes, Google Drive, very useful. Ticky Talky, I don't know if anyone's used that. It's timeline software. It's an example of something that only does one thing, but it does it really well. The students really like Ticky Talky. At the middle of the semester, we did a really kind of quick feedback thing, frowny face, smiley face, what's working, what's not. And what you see here is very um, representative of how the class was feeling as a whole. They liked the class, they liked the tech piece, 
but the fact that we had left things so open-ended was actually stressing them out. Uh, so we responded to this feedback in the arc of the class, it really went from vaguely defined group projects, and as we realized that they were struggling with that, at the end of the semester, we were really pretty uh, much working on individual projects, clearly, you know, fairly defined. Because that's what they ended up wanting. So that was sort of inter interesting to me and the thing that kind of surprised us. So keeping with the smiley face, frowny face uh, aspect, we thought we'd go into our own little retrospective and feel free to jump in, James. But our biggest frowny face was the online communication. We really took a go big or go home approach in terms of blending this course. We skipped class meetings to try to force the students into interacting online. Um, but it ended up being really hard. Um, I, you know, blended learning, what you're looking for are these meaningful interactions that are happening online or sense of presence online. I did a blended graduate program myself, so I know it's possible. I know it you know, can happen to have a meaningful learning interaction online. But it just didn't quite happen. The students just didn't really commit to that online presence. They didn't really fully engage in the online arena, even though I do feel like we kind of built, you know, we had the right tools. James and I were right there online, pretty much always available. Um, but I think what it represents is that how difficult it is for one class to stand alone in what is otherwise a face to face institution. And the students have a really clear idea of what they expect and what the engagements typically look like for them, which are face-to-face, -face, and it just was really hard for them to make that shift. Um, and yet, I think it kind of proved a little bit too much for them. So I think it's a super good reality check uh, for future projects like this at tradition, otherwise traditional institutions that there may be a limit to how blended you can go unless it's part of some larger institutional shift that's happening. So the online communication, Although the, the irony is, uh, you know, the minute we ask them what they want to eat at the end of semester dinner, they're like right there, you know, timing it on the trail or it's otherwise really pointy. So, just saying. Um, <laughs> sort of a not quite frowny, but not quite smiley either. Was just how long the process took. Uh, not so much the technology, but just talk, you know, because we left the project very open ended, we spent a lot of time talking about what we were going to do. A lot of time I'm doing. Um, I know there's a frustration for James. Many times he took the class talking about projects and things. Academics, taking more than we anticipated. And the more you did one media includes so it's like so and together. Um, and then this kind of long road doing most men up with in small ways. Then we change what your definition of success was? I mean, because it sounds like sort of right here at the end, you were saying we expected this, but we got this. Mm -hmm. Would you do it again with that end in mind? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's easy to go in yes. with a nice shiny product at the end, you know? That's what I was kind of reminding myself of in the beginning of the semester, when it, or in the middle of the semester, where it looked like everything was kind of going down the flames. Like, I got the product, they're going through this process, and you're okay. So maybe let's focus on this product at the end, more on the business. Yeah, the, the learning experience and the things that you go about. But also in retrospect, I think maybe just not blending it quite so much. I think it was just, yeah, there was part of it that just was overly ambitious. It was good to try. I feel like we're kind of 
tiptoeing toward the edge is how far you can really go and planning a course and you try to go off the edge. So you know, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.